Annex 4 WHO guidelines for sampling of pharmaceutical products and related materials. Number 1 Introduction These guidelines are primarily intended for use by governmental organizations such as drug regulat regulatory authorities, quality control laboratories and customs and police officers but some of the general principles may also be appropriate for application by pro occurment agencies, manufacturers and customers. These guidelines should be useful when surveying the national markets for the quality of drug products in accordance with national drug quality surveillance programs for marketed products whether registered for sale or compounded in pharmacies. The choice of a sampling plan should always take into consideration the specific objectives of the sampling and the risks and consequences associated with inherent decision errors. The bibliography at the end of this annex should be consulted when justifying a sampling plan for a given purpose. General considerations SAM 1.1 Sampling comprises the operations designed to select a portion of pharmaceutical product for definition for a de defined purpose. The sampling procedure should be appropriate to the purpose of sampling, to the type of controls intended to be applied to the samples and to material to be supplied. The procedure should be described in writing. All operations related to sampling should be performed with care using proper equipment and tools. Any contamination of the sample by dust or other foreign material is liable to geoparadize the validity of the subsequent analysis. 1.2 Glossary The definitions given below apply to the terms as used in these guidelines. They may have different meanings in other contexts. A. Available sample Whatever total quantity of sample material is available. B. Batch a quantity of any drug produced during a given cycle of manufacture. If the manufacturing process is continuous, the batch origi originates in a defined period of time during which the manufacturing conditions are stable and have not been modified. C. Combined sample. Sample resulting from combining all or parts of two or more samples of the material. D. Consignment. The quantity of a bulk starting material or of a drug product made by one manufacturer or supplied by an agent and supplied at one time in response to a particular request or order. A consignment may compromise, compromise may comprise one or more lot identified packages or containers and may include material belonging to more than one lot identified batch. E. Final sample. Sample ready for application of the test procedure. F. Homogeneity. A material is regarded as homogeneous when it is all of the same origin and as non-homogeneous when it is not of when it is of different origins. G. Original sample. Sample collected directly from the material. H. Pharmaceutical product. Any material or product intended for human or veterinary use presenting in its finished dosage form or as starting material for use in such a dosage form, it is subject to control by pharmaceutical legislation in the exporting state and or the importing state. I. Pre-qualification. The activities undertaken in defining a product or service need seeking expressions of interest from an enterprises to supply the product or service and examining the product or service offered against the specification and the facility where the product or service is prepared against common standards of good manufacturing practice. The examination of the product or service and of the facility where it is manufactured is performed by trained and qualified inspectors against common standards. Once the product is approved and the facility is approved for the delivery of the specified product or service, other procurement agencies are informed of the approval. Pre-qualification is required for all pharmaceutical products regardless of their composition and place of manufacture or registration. But the amount and type of information requested from the supplier for use in the assessment of assessment by the procurement agency may differ. J. Production. 
all operations involved in the preparation of a pharmaceutical product from receipt of materials through processing, packaging and repacking, labeling and relabeling to completion of the finished product. K. Random sample. Sample in which the different fractions of the material have an equal probability of being represented. L. Representative sample. Sample obtained according to a sampling procedure designed to ensure that the different parts of a batch or the different properties of a non-uniform material are proportionately represented. M. Retention sample. Sample collected as part of original sampling process and reserved for future testing. The size of a retention sample should be sufficient to allow for at least two confirmatory analyses. In some cases, statutory regulations may require one or more retention samples, each of which should be separately identified, packaged and sealed. N. Sample. A portion of a material collected according to a defi defined sampling procedure, the size of any sample should be sufficient to allow all anticipated, anticipated test procedures to be carried out including all repetitions and retention samples. If the quality quantity of material available is not sufficient for the intended analysis and for the retention samples, the inspector should record that the sampled material is the available sample and the evaluation of the results should take an account of the limitations that arise from the insufficient sample size. O. Sampler. Person responsible for performing the sampling operations. Sampling method. That part of the sampling procedure dealing with the method prescribed for withdrawing samples. Sampling plan. P. Description of the location, number of units and quantity of material that should be collected and associated acceptance criteria. Q. Sampling procedure. The complete sampling operations to be performed on a defined material for a specific purpose. A detailed written description of the sampling procedure is provided in the sampling protocol. R. Sampling record. Written record of the sampling operations carried out on a particular material for a defined purpose. The sampling record should contain the batch number, date and place of sampling, reference to the sampling protocol used, a description of the containers and of the materials sampled, notes on possible abnormalities together with any other relevant observations and the name and signature of the inspector. S. Sampling unit. Discrete part of a consignment such as an individual package, drum or container. T. Selected sample. Sample obtained according to a sampling procedure designed to select a fraction of the material that is likely to have special properties, a selected sample that is likely to contain deteriorated contaminated, adulterated or otherwise unacceptable material is known as an extreme sample. U. Uniformity. A starting material may be considered uniform when samples drawn from different layers do not show significant differences in the quality control test which would result in non-conformity with specifications. The following materials may be considered uniform unless there are signs to the contrary. Organic and inorganic chemicals, purified natural products, various processed natural products such as fatty oils and essential oils and plant extracts. The assumption of uniformity is strengthened by homogeneity i.e. when the assignment is derived from a single batch. 1.3 Purpose of Sampling Sampling may be required for different purposes such as pre-qualification, acceptance of consignments, batch release testing, in process control, special controls, inspection for custom, customs clearance, data rotation or adulteration and for obtaining a retention sample. The test to be applied to the sample may include verifying the identity, performing complete pharmacopoeial or analogous testing and performing special or specific tests. 1.4 classes and types of pharmaceutical products and related materials. The materials to be sampled may belong to the following classes. Starting materials for use in the manufacture of finished pharmaceutical products, intermediates in the manufacturing process, 
pharmaceutical products, primary and secondary packaging materials and cleaning and sanitizing agents, compressed gases and other processing agents. 1.5 Sampling Facilities Sampling facilities should be designed to prevent contamination of the open container, the materials and the operator, prevent cross contamination by other materials, products and the environment and protect the individual who samples procedure. Where possible, sampling should be performed in an area or booth designed for and dedicated to this purpose. Although this will not be possible where samples are required to be taken from a production line. The area in which the sample was taken should be recorded in the sampling record and a sequential log should be kept of all materials sampled in each area. Sampling from large containers of starting material or bulk products can present difficulties. Whenever possible, this work should be carried out in a separate closed cubicle within the warehouse to reduce the risk of contamination of either the sample or the materials remaining in the container or of cross contamination. Some materials should be sampled in special or dedicated environments. Generally, taking the original cells packs as a sample form, outlets such as pharmacies or hospitals does not present problems. However, the inspector should ensure that the quality quantity of sample taken is sufficient for the intended analysis and for the retention samples and that all unit samples are derived from the same batch and preferably from the same location. 1.6 Responsibilities for Sampling Those responsible for, for sampling procedures include government, governmental organizations such as drug control authorities, quality control laboratories, customs and police authorities responsible for the clearance of drug products held in quarantine after manufacture or importation and for the detection of pharmaceutical products that have deteriorated or have been contaminated, adulterated or counterfeited. Customers such as governmental or non-governmental agencies involved in the acquisition of drug products and manufacturers in the context of good manufacturing practices GMP. The samplers need to be adequately trained in the practical aspects of sampling, qualified to perform the sampling operation and should have sufficient knowledge of pharmaceutical substance to allow them to execute the work effectively and safely. Given that the sampling technique itself can introduce bias, it is important that personnel carrying out the sampling should be suitably trained in the techniques and procedures used. The training should be documented in the individual's training records. Sampling records should clearly indicate the date of sampling, the sampled container and the identity of the person who sampled the batch. A, a systematic approach with meticulous attention to detail and cleanliness is essential. The sampler should remain alert to any signs of contamination, deterioration or tampering. Any suspicious signs should be recorded in detail in the sampling record. If a governmental agency needs to sample a sterile or bulk pharmaceutical product at the manufacturing site, it may be best to have the manufacturers personal collect the sample, personal collect the sample using their own procedures. The regulatory inspector would observe the procedure in such a way as not to increase the chance of contamination. And to preclude the possibility of the inspector inadvertently contaminating the remaining bulk pharmaceutical product through poor procedures. For example, 1.7 Health and Safety It is responsibility of the sampler to read the relevant health and safety information before sampling the material. The information should include necessary safety precautions and requirements for both the operator and the environment. The sampler should wear appropriate protective clothing for the task. If specific safety precautions are required, such as the use of respiratory equipment, the sampler should be properly trained in its use. The sampler should have safe access to and egress from the place where the sample is taken and the places where the samples are taken for storage. The sample storage area should have adequate light and ventilation and should be arranged to satisfy the requirements for safety as well as any special ones 
arising from the characteristics of the material being sampled care should be taken to guard against collapse of stacked containers or solids in bulk